Vivek Sharaya. I am super, super happy to have you sitting in my chair, coming on my show. I have read about you and the tremendous body of work that you represent and that you put out there. She of the Mountains has gotten a tremendous amount of, um, you know, buzz and accolades. Of course, you're up for one of the biggest literary um, awards in the LGBTQ community. Talk to me about that experience for you in terms of even, you know, having the guts to write a book like that. Let's go there first. Honestly, it's all been really um, surprising, and I don't even mean that in a self-deprecating way. Um, when you look at like who, you know, they make these like literary lists all the time, right? Like the, the best writers of all time, or the most important writers of all time. And when you look at those lists, it's always white person, white person, white person, white person. And so when you put out a book like mine, um, that's about two brown characters, and it's a bisexual love story, you don't expect that there's going to be a huge readership for it. So it's been so nice that um, people have been interested in it and yes. that it's getting the attention that it's getting. And for me, it's a reminder to um, not underestimate the audience, right? That, Absolutely. Um, there's, you never know who's going to be interested in your work, and so you've got to just follow your truth. Absolutely. And you've definitely been following your truth. But it's not easy, eh? I mean, it's not easy. I don't know. Um, you tell me. I'm not going to. Yeah, um, just sure. I'm not going to just assume that I know what your life story is. But I do know, generally speaking, that it's not easy to be who you are as an individual. And when I mean who you are, I'm talking about all of us within our community, right? Even you know, women, men, whatever it is, you know that our community represents, one thing I know that's really difficult is for anyone to stand out and get the appreciation that they should. Have you had that kind of a struggle, like really, you know, coming out and saying, this is who I am, this is what I represent, this is the body of work that, you know, I want to put out there and I advocate for, right, um, with potentially having the fear that you'll get a lot of backlash. I've been very fortunate um, with my parents, especially because that's always the big question, right? Is like, how do your parents feel about always this? Always right? the especially parents, with yeah. like brown parents, right? Like we don't know. Um, there's not a lot of models for support, you know, for um, brown parents of, of gay kids or queer kids. Um, Absolutely. But I've been very fortunate to have the kind of parents that. Um, you know, have been very, very supportive of me. I mean, it's been a journey. It's not like they came out with the rainbow flag right away. <laughs> uh, but we've we've had important discussions, and my parents now, like, you know, even before this interview, my mom texted me, and she was like, God bless you, we support you, we, we stand behind you. So having that, I think, having family behind you and having friends who love you gives you the kind of courage to be who you are in the world. and But it's been a journey for me, for sure. I think that, especially when you look at my body of work the first couple of years, like, I started out as a musician, and, you know, I had blonde hair, and I wore blue contacts, and, um, you know, I was told by people in the industry, like, you know, they'll never sign a brown artist, that sort of thing. So it's been a journey to come into who I am as, like, a queer Indian or a queer South Asian and be proud of that and own all of that. Is, is there something that just always comes to mind when you think, gosh, you know, I don't know how I got through that one, but I did? Uh, There's many. Yeah, that's what I was saying. <laughs> I was like, which one? I mean, that's the thing about being an artist, right? Yes. Is that like, um, again, when I try to look for role models, like how many, you know, especially like, you know, queer, South Asian, writer, musicians, like there, there's not a lot of people to look up to. And I think yes. that that's one of my biggest challenges is always like, is this life, where does this life go to? And like, what are, what are the, what's the end goal? And how do I get there? And sort of having to carve my own path. But why did you decide to specifically advocate for the LGBTQ community? Why? Was that important for you? Well, I know it seems obvious. No, but I don't. I don't feel it is. So tell me why you decided to go that route. Why that was important across all the, you know, multidisciplinary ways that you've done it. Yeah, and I mean, I didn't start out my career that way, right? So it's interesting that that's become such a central part of what I do. And I think a big part of it is. You know, I grew up in Edmonton, Alberta in the 80s and 90s, and I grew up with, like, I got called fag. I experienced homophobia every day from grade 7 to grade 12. And when I say every day, I'm not exaggerating. Like, yes. every day I had, you know, I, I didn't have any physical attacks, but I had people following me into the washrooms, following me in the school halls. And I think for me, as an adult, I've, m my biggest motivation has been trying to provide the kinds of supports or create the kinds of supports that, like, you didn't I, have. I didn't have and that I could have benefited from and 
you know, I opened Twitter yesterday and it was like, prom, um, transgender prom king in um, Kingston killed himself. And, oh. you know, that's still happening, right? I think a lot of people think, oh, you know, it's, we have gay marriage in Canada, so things are better. Um, but things are never better, um, Vivek. That's like talking about the, the entire gender <laughs> um, scenario. Yeah. When, is, when does it ever really get better? Just because more people are talking about it? I mean, of course, that's the start, right? Yeah, more people talking about it um, is a start towards equality. But even today, after all these years of women getting the vote, for example, I'm talking about this because it's a very parallel of course, story. Of course, of um, course. You know, women are still, what, 67 cents on the dollar? Was it 67, 69 cents on the dollar, something like that? It's ridiculous. And why? What, because you have, are a certain gender or you have a certain sexual um, you know, orientation? Why does it matter? Well, and what's interesting about what you're saying is that like, there is actually a strong parallel because so much of what I was encountering had nothing to do with my sexuality, but it was more about misogyny, right? I yes. was acting like a woman. As a boy in North America, there's nothing worse than acting like a girl, right? Yes. So it really does come down to gender, right? Like, yes. So, um, yeah, it's a lot stronger than some people realize that connection there. Absolutely. But, you know, even my mom, she'll be like, you know, why are you doing this work? It's so painful. You have to expose yourself. Um, but for me, you know, the thing I've said to her is like, as long as there's still, you know, gay youth in the world that feel like they need to kill themselves because they can't be who they are, then I, I need to do this work. Yes. Right. Yes. So um, in some ways, it doesn't feel like a choice. It feels like a necessity. And, and, and that's what's great about anyone that is an advocate towards something. Talk to me about some of the work that you've done across these different genres. Sure. I mean, of course, there's the book, mm -hmm. um, music. There's a number of things that you've done. Talk to me about these various aspects that, you know, together um, create the advocacy of, you know, who you are and how you contribute. I have three books. Um, one book we've talked about, Sheep of the Mountains. God yes. Loves Hair is my first book, and it's actually a collection of short stories illustrated. Um, and it's also um, based on my experience growing up in Edmonton as um, a queer South Asian and having immigrant parents. Because that's the other thing is a lot of LGBT books, they're still predominantly by white people or about white people, right? Yes. So our stories, those intersections of immigrant parents and Hindu beliefs, all those things don't really get seen. So that was what felt important to write. Um, I also make short films. Um, so, you know, going back to the question of advo advocacy, I made a film called What I Love About Being Queer. And yeah, the reason why I made did. that is because, um, you know, so often when we, people talk about queerness or gayness, it's associated with a negative or, you know, it's associated with tragedy or hardship. It's like, oh, those poor people, right. like, ugh, that's happening to them. Um, nobody thinks that it's a positive thing, right? No one thinks it's a, a good thing. And um, I still meet with queer youth in my day job and um, as an artist. And they often talk to me about how they hate who they are and wish they could change this part of themselves. And so I wanted to create a project where they could watch this film or engage with this project and see how that there's actually so many things about being queer that actually makes you beautiful right. and lovely. And I feel like with a lot of different oppressed groups, there's this kind of work, like there's a lot of work around like why being black is beautiful or yes. why being brown is beautiful, but there hasn't been a lot of work around why queerness is beautiful. Yeah. And so I interviewed 34 you know, local queer people and made this film and then it sort of blew up. I created a Tumblr site where anyone could participate. So we had submissions from all around the world, including India, where people contributed what they love about being queer. And most recently we turned it into a book and I partnered with George Brown College where I work. And every dollar from that book goes to a scholarship for LGTB students at George Brown College. Brilliant. So it was, you know, a project inspired by my work and and queer youth and now all the money is going back to support them. So I mean that's sort of like an over overview of some of the stuff that I've been involved in. And and what are you planning on doing in the future? I mean, you, there's a lot you've already done and I know that I feel that you're the kind of person that um, you know is ever evolving in your journey of life. You know, the, some people just, you know, they get their job, you know, they get married, they have their kids and they retire, right? And that pretty much is 80% of the mm -hmm. people that you and I will meet, right? Um, in, in a lifetime. And then there's people like yourself, people like me, who are, you know- Workaholics? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> we, we, we work for something that we feel is greater than what we do on an everyday basis as people, right? And um, and it's not really about us, but it's about something greater than, you know, who we are. And um, that journey is always ever evolving. 
So I'm always excited to meet people like you and, you know, people like myself, of course, because I know on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, my perspective, my journey is constantly evolving and changing. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden there'll be this other way that I want to do what I believe in, right? You're clearly one of those people because you talked about the film, we've talked about you being an author, you know, um, obviously the music um, as well. What next for you? Do you, I mean, in your evolution, as you know, the creative being that you are and this mission that you're clearly on, what would be next for you? I mean, for me, I think that, I mean, kind of going back to some of the, the, what we've talked about, I think one of the things that needs to be pushed more is around racism, um, issues around racism. I think in Canada, you know, we, we say we're a multicultural ca country and we, we are, you know, very diverse, but I think that in Canada we have the habit of sort of like sliding issues around race under the table. And I mean, I grew up with immigrant parents, so I know what the impact of, of racism is in Canada. And so yes. for me, that feels like something I really want to push. Um, I haven't figured out how I'm going to do that. Um, and then on a personal level, like music for me, it's great that the other work has taken off, but music sort of like m my love and my passion. So I want to find a way to come back to music. And I think when I was first starting out in music, like I said, I had blonde hair and I felt like I, I really assimilated, yes. um, tried to make sort of Western music or what I thought people would like. And, you know, last year for the first time I, I, I put a, like, uh, I actually made, a, it was called All of the Lights and it was a Christmas the Wally EP and it was the first time that I put out like music that had like my Indian background on it too. And so I want to find more ways to, to be my true self or my yes. whole self in music yes. because I feel like I've done that in other genres but not necessarily in the one that I'm most passionate about right. so that's more for me personally but hopefully that will also inspire other people who um, are interested in doing that kind of thing. Absolutely. Tell me um, in closing um, Vivek all those people out there that you know clearly have um, many many challenges to deal with um, coming into their own you know, identity is a huge part of the human um, journey that mm -hmm. we're on. Uh, what would you say to them? Because identity clearly is something that has been a massive part of your history, mm -hmm. you know, for your own personal journey. Still evolving. As it, yeah, <laughs> as it is with me, mm -hmm. right? Um, we're very much that person. What would you say to them, that the younger generation that now have a lot more to deal with, with the social media and just all of the other ways that people can negatively impact our, you know, your lives as well as positively? I mean, I think the biggest thing that I often think about, especially when I think about where, like I feel like it took me 34 years to get to be the person that I've always known I was, but to have the courage to be that person. And so I guess in thinking about that, my message is always just, you know who you are, you know your true self, don't listen to anyone else, you're always gonna be surrounded by people who think they know you better, who are gonna tell you what you are. You know, I've been told that I was gay, I couldn't be attracted to women, I was told I couldn't be successful as a brown artist, like I've been told so many things, and you know, I listen to some of those things, unfortunately. Well, we do, don't we? Yeah, I, well, when you have, you know, uh, pressure when it's coming at you over and over and over again it's yes. hard not to and when you're at a certain age as well right yeah so that's I mean that's the thing that's the hardest about youth is that you're so impressionable and you're being fed all of these messages and so you know the biggest thing to hold on to is like you know your truth ultimately ultimately I really think people know who they are and there's something so tender about who we are in our teen years and um, but it's also easy to lose and so just really hold on to that hold on to who you who you know you are I absolutely agree with you now. I feel that there's, you know, in, in today's society, it's a lot harder to figure that out because there's so much external noise. Yep. There's so many different platforms through which people communicate so much stuff that you don't need to participate in. Like there, there's just no filter. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of people feel that that's a good thing, but you know, I don't know so much. I mean, you know, I go back to kind of, you know, my heritage and how, you know, in spirituality and meditation, you know, that moment of silence is where you actually get to hear you, right? And I feel that with pop culture, there is so much noise mm -hmm. to be able to actually, you know, really feel and hear and resonate with who you really are. Mm -hmm. That's the hardest part, I think, 
for the, the, today's youth. I totally agree. I totally yeah. agree. And we're, I feel very lucky. Like, you know, I didn't grow up in a time where every, you know, awkward haircut or awkward style was documented. That's the thing that scares me about the internet is just that everything is documented and everything is on the internet. And, you know, even if you Google yourself, there's like really bad things. I can only imagine, or for me at least, there's like really bad photos, but I can only imagine if you're I 14, if you're 14 and that stuff just, and it just stays there. It's yeah. there forever, right? And yeah. so, yeah, I, I agree with you. I think it's really hard, hold, hard to hold on to, to your truth and not um, get distracted by the fog, as you call it. Absolutely, but that's why people like you exist, right? That you're constantly <laughs> advocating and showing people different ways that they can find their truth. Thank you so much Thank for giving so me your much. time. I really appreciate chatting with you. And I want to know more about you know, the things that you're working on. And as they start to come posted. to you, keep me posted. Come back, chat with me. I'd and love that. Um, you know, we'll do an encore. Okay, fantastic. Thank you Thank for you your so time. Much. Really appreciate you. Thank you.